That's me. Okay. Oh, sorry. Um, what was I going to do? I was going to get this to show there. Look at that. Isn't that lovely? Those are snapdragons. Oh, in front of the Cracker Barrel restaurant. Anyway, um, it's one of my, my, uh, my formerly uh, dad struck suddenly like, oh yeah, he's dead. Um, my, my dad and my stepmom, where they used to go together a lot, now she just goes. Anyway, um, sorry, that was weird. Snapdragons. Snapdragons are beautiful. They make people happy. They make bees happy. Um, they're lovely things to grow. Here it takes a little bit to get them to grow. Um, these little bedding ones, though, you grow them all winter long. If you get them to, uh, to bloom before the nighttime temperatures get to be around 50 degrees, they'll bloom all winter long, which is kind of nice. The ones that you buy, like from Armstrong or from the local nursery, are the sh little shorty bedding ones. I think it says they're like, do I put it in there? 12 to 15, like uh, 12 to 15 inches tall. But some of the ones that I tried to grow um, get to be like five feet tall. But those usually require a long period of cool weather um, and sun that we don't have. But you can easily grow, you know, three, four foot tall, beautiful snapdragons if you wanted to do that. They're wonderful, wonderful cut flowers. This is awesome. Check that out. That's what the seed pods look like. I think those are wild. Um, anyway, so what about the snapdragon? It is in the Plantagenaceae, which is kind of, wow, I want to know more about that family. It's not a family that I know about besides just being um, plantain, um, the little um, lovely thing that psyllium husk comes from. I wonder if psyllium husks <laughs> look like that. Probably wouldn't be very good for their marketing. The fiber, you know, when you buy like metamucil and stuff, that psyllium husk. Plantain is also supposedly a, um, a remedy for poison oak. I don't know, chew it up, rub it on your skin. Um, but Plantagenaceae, like, I, I want to know more about the family because I didn't realize that snapdragons were in that family. And there's other other things that I've recently discovered are also in the Plantagenaceae. And I think next week I'll probably be covering that, or maybe the week after, in the Lamiales order. So bushy and erect stems, like they have nice um, leaf mass coming out. Lance-shaped deep green leaves and flowers in upright spikes mostly upright for the taller varieties. They have a tendency to fall over and then keep growing though. Um, blooms have petals as five loaves. So if you've never, uh, I wish I had one right here. No, Fox glove. sorry. I cut some this morning, sold them to somebody. Um, if you squeeze the sides of the flower, it makes the mouth open. It's like the, the little snapdragon, but not all of the snapdragons have that. There's a different kinds. There's azalea flowering. There's Madame butterfly types. There's a bunch of different kinds of snapdragons, so they don't all have that little um, dragon mouth, which is kind of a cool thing. My kids love to do that. Um, indeed, they prefer cool weather and warm climates. They bloom in winter and spring, early spring. I'm hoping that mine blooms soon. Uh, they're just starting right now not if, because I didn't get them growing soon enough to be blooming before nighttime temperatures got low. They are zygomorphic as opposed to actinomorphic. So zygomorphic has bilateral symmetry. They're symmetrical along the line around the middle. Both sides are mirror images of each other. Whereas in an actinomorphic bloom, it's got radial symmetry. So it's like a pizza anywhere that you cut it, it's, it's a line of symmetry. Um, mum, 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 mum. What else about these guys? And the lamiales, snapdragon. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, pretty pictures, really pretty flowers. Now we're going to move on. So I think this whole section is about bedding plants. So these are uh, calendulas, right? Everybody grows calendulas, right? Um, they're just nice to have around. Like even if you don't grow flowers per se, if you grow vegetables, um, these are good to have around because they attract bees like crazy and butterflies. So they attract pollinators. Um, they're just really handy plants. Like sort of you just flip marigolds and calendulas. Calendulas like the cool weather. Marigolds like the warm weather and it's weird that these are called pot marigolds. I don't know why they're they're very different marigolds have super wavy petals. These have very flat petals. I don't know if you've ever had this explained to you. Here we go. So these are I always flip them around. So pardon my little um, botanical dyslexia. There's ray and disc petals flowers rather. Um, these are ray flowers. That's correct. So they, the ray flowers have these, I think it's two fused petals. They get really tall. And then the other ones are sort of like non-existent or they just aren't very visible, not with the naked eye. 
Um, and then so the ray flowers have the, the rays coming out, like this is true of any Asteraceae family, like sunflowers. And then the disc flowers are in here. So each one of these little bits is a tiny little flower, like every one of those little things is a flower. And if you've ever seen like this that shows the development, I'm trying to identify these weird and beautiful little like fractal spirals that happen inside the head of a sunflower or a calendula or anything else in the Asteraceae. It's really cool. It also is the same on the pine cone. Like if you look at a pine cone, they have those spirals. It's the kind of stuff my mathematician husband is always like, no, I don't say fractal like that, it's not accurate. It's the way I feel about a lot of botanical terms too. So it's sort of fractally, which may or may not be true. It's cool spirals though, the way they develop. So we've got the disc flowers in there, the ray flowers around the outside. There we go. And of course, you already figured out then that this is an inflorescence, even though we talk about it as if it were a flower. What's cool about the calendulas too is that they're really, um, they have a lot of medicinal properties. Their oil has, I can't remember the compound, but it's got um, stuff that's very emollient. It helps our skin to heal and uh, good for skin. You can eat the petals, they're really beautiful in a salad. So not just edible, but also medicinal flowers. That's cool. Um, there we go, butterfly magnets, yep. And so usually we think of these as having these like bright yellows and oranges, which for flower, cut flower stuff is maybe, it's maybe your thing, um, but it's not most people's thing. So they also come in really lovely kind of smoky cantaloupe. Is that a color? Sure, things like that. Um, you can find them and they're super easy to grow. They're really, really wonderful things. So daisy-like flowers, um, bright orange, two and a half to four and a half inches, simple alternate leaves. Can't really tell that from here. I have some growing outside. I should have picked one. Sorry. Um, alternate leaves on angular branch stems spreading up to two feet long. Uh, the stems are covered in fine hairs. Um, that's probably, I think those hairs too, the resinous hairs, they're kind of sticky if you harvest them. Uh, it's probably where a lot of their medicine comes from. The edges of the spatulate or oblanceolate leaves. So spatulate is kind of like broad at the end. Ob lanceolate is sort of like oval lanceolate, like oval or long. Um, leaves are wavy but not toothed. Um, so the margins would be a little, they're not entire or smooth. Um, the leaves are sticky and aromatic, although not as much in the modern cultivars, but still a lot really. And I think they're called pot marigolds too because they do so well in containers. So bright annual color, um, mast in borders, parking strips, maybe not in Southern California. They need more water than that or in pots. Um, but you know, they, they're planted like in front of buildings and like with snapdragons, um, they're, they're pretty. Um, the, the floral strains get higher than that, one to two feet tall, one to one and a half feet uh, wide, and then dwarfs. The bedding plants are, are little shorties, and they're from Southern Europe and Eastern Mediterranean regions. And then El Ultimo, the Madagascar Periwinkle. So I'm curious about the taxonomy of this guy, because I learned this, looks a lot like impatience, doesn't it? I learned this uh, as Vinca, right, over at the, um, there's loads of it over by the Rose Bowl, like the Arroyo Seco going down from the Rose Bowl, um, all in the woods there, and it's horribly invasive. It's not like, I mean, I don't know, is it terrible? It doesn't grow everywhere because it's limited to only grow places where it's wet, but it means it's crowding out space that natives would be growing there, one would hope anyway. Um, so I don't know, is it is it invasive? Is this, uh, is Vinca, formerly known as Vinca, it used to be Vinca Major and Vinca Minor, I think referring to the size. I don't know if both of those have now been uh, swallowed by Catharanthus or not. I don't really understand what happened to the taxonomy of uh, Vinca because I haven't looked into it at all. But here we go. So this is this is Catharanthus roseus um, in the Apocynaceae, the dog bane family. There's a lot of funky poisons and medicines in there. Bane usually means like bad for, um, and the Genshin Yales, glossy, super glossy leaves, like they're really kind of waxy looking, um, about one to three inches long, cover the bushy plant. So yeah, they're, they're attractive plants. They're not sparse 
Um, they're pretty one and a half inch flowers come in white to pink to rose and sometimes dapplings of, of colors on the petals. Um, they have that overlapping petals like where the it looks like a pinwheel as the, and they unfurl kind of like a pinwheel and the petals continue a little bit of that right They're like oh yeah that's so visible now uh, overlapping kind of nature i don't know if i got a good picture of that yeah and this is going to make a liar of me because none of those are overlapping at all yeah whatever just pretend um i have seen pictures of these with very clear overlapping petals well you see that that kind of unfurling pinwheely right okay what else about these guys um, mounded or trailing forms, so kind of vining, but not ones that grow up anything. Um, they're used as summer to fall uh, color. So that just means they bloom for a long season, especially where it's really hot. Apparently they're happy with the heat and very few things are. So that's probably a big, a big reason to, to know them and grow them. Um, lots of different zones. <clears throat> I think it said that they're perennials, but they're usually grown as annuals. No, I don't have it open anymore. Sorry one to two feet high and I think depending on whether it's mounting or trailing it would be probably either that wide or else that the trailing varieties would be wider they didn't see anywhere that said how wide probably not a big surprise it's from Madagascar um yeah there we go perennial grown as an annual um as it gets cool or towards the end of like the season if it's planted in the in the spring and they said um by winter it's usually looking pretty pretty ratty um, so it does self sow, which is good if you're growing it, but not good if it's then taking over all uh, the area like by the rose bowl, um, by the little stream there. Um, interestingly enough, and so with the dogbane family, often the things that are poisons also have a lot of medicines, right? Because it's really a matter of dose and how it's used. So these were used for all kinds of things where they're native to, some of which you just kind of scratch your head like it's a wonder that people maybe actually did die of the cure. Uh, besides just the disease, but um, vincristin and vinblastin. So they stop your cells uh, from dividing so actively, um, which is normally a very bad thing, the poison part. But if you have cancer, and I think this was like childhood leukemia they were used for, and the, the overloaded cell growth, the extra abundance, my vocabulary is like poof, um, just exuberant cell growth that creates tumors is a huge problem. So you want to stop those cells from growing uh, so they don't kill you. Um, so vincristin and vinblastin are two of the drugs that are extracted from these plants or maybe were first identified. Then the chemists always look for ways to try to do it in a lab because the plant extraction part can be a little challenging. Um, anyway, so information about that and then the pretty pictures, which I don't know about you, but I love, look at, see those super waxy, bright green, super bright green leaves. Well, look at the venation in there. That's interesting. Usually you'd expect there to be net venation, like spider webby, but this looks very parallel. Yeah, really parallel veins in those leaves. Okay, that's it. Over and out.